and welcome back to Football Made Simple. Between 2008 and 2012, Spain displayed complete and utter dominance on the international scene. Having previously only won the Euros in a four-team tournament in 1964, Spain were not an international football juggernaut or anything of the sort. But between these years, they became the first nation to win the Euros, the World Cup and then the Euros again, under the guidance of Luis Aragona and Vincente del Bosque. But what tactics led to these triumphs? Let's take a look. And first, a big thanks to OneFootball for sponsoring today's video. OneFootball is the premier football app, giving you news, stats and much more and you can get it absolutely free from the link in the description below to support the channel. The Spanish national football team wasn't always renowned for possession-based play with slight and technical midfielders. In fact, before the era of Tiki Taka, there was La Furia, a pretty elementary style of football that involved trying to get into good wide areas and swinging in as many crosses as possible into the twin forwards. But after a week showing in the 2006 World Cup, change was on the horizon. The team changed throughout the three tournaments, but there were a few key pillars. In 2008, Aragona opted for the 4-4-2 primarily, but with creative players in Iniesta and David Silva out wide rather than crosses. In 2010, Del Bosque opted for a 4-2-3-1, giving them high control in midfield. This was upped in 2012, with the formation morphing into a strikerless and wingerless 4-6-0. Let's first take a look at 2008. Although the 4-4-2 was the primary solution, in several matches they actually played better with a solitary forward, with Torres often becoming the main forward and Fabregas joining Xavi in midfield to form a 4-1-4-1. And despite the attacking brilliance of players like Xavi, Iniesta, Silva and Torres, it could be argued the key to the team was Marco Senna. In either formation, he was the only midfielder primarily focused on the defensive element of the game. And that, combined with his incredible work rate, meant that he was the platform to allow the technical playmakers to showcase their talents. This Spain side was still focused on possession, often playing out from the back, but they were much more lethargic in their possession. This was before the era of Guardiola's juego de posición, where possession was much more intentional. This was more passive position, often rotating the ball around the back until the perfect gap opened up to play into midfield. In many ways, possession was used as a defensive tool, as their counterpress had not yet been developed, so a loss of possession would have been much more costly, especially when playing a single pivot. But when they did work the ball into midfield, Senna often looked to pass it on to Xavi, who was the conductor of the game and the key to stitching the midfield and the attack together. This was also the trigger for the inverted wide playmakers in David Silva and Iniesta to drift into the half spaces. A stark contrast to the old Spain sides where the wingers hugged the touchlines. At this time both fullbacks, and Ramos in particular, loved to maraud high up the pitch to still provide width to stretch the opposition backline. And Spain, in the final third, had many options as they could try to slip it into the wide fullbacks who looked for the cutback into the box or the cross as they still had two aerially capable forwards. But Villa could also drop deeper into midfield, potentially drawing a centre-back out and create another passing lane, or if the centre-back stayed deep, he could create or shoot for himself. He could also push right up alongside Torres, giving the midfield man more options on where to pass. And when it came to defending, there was no rampant pressing. International sides rarely have the time to work on coordinated pressing mechanisms, so they would instead drop into a 4-5-1 mid-block with Villa dropping into the midfield. In 2010, Vincente del Bosque had to tweak the side rather than implement a total overhaul. With the likes of Marquena and Senna out of the side, there were decisions to be made. In defence, Gerard Pique had now established himself at Barcelona and the holding role of Senna was much harder to fill, but del Bosque changed to a double pivot instead with Busquets and Alonso alongside each other. And in this tournament, Del Bosque opted for much pacier wingers in Pedro and often moving Villa to the wide left. Although of course, players like Fabregas and Silva also made massive contributions in certain matches. Spain actually lost their opening match of the tournament, immediately putting them on the back foot, so they had to be more cautious and played much less expansively. 
they switched to an even higher possession style, with players in much closer proximity in case they lost the ball and their possession rose from 50% in 08 to 59% in the World Cup. This led to Spain scoring just 8 times in 7 matches to lift the trophy. But they were still able to keep possession fairly easily, especially with 3 maestros in the centre of the pitch. However, neither Busquets nor Alonso were physically gifted, so two men were needed to cover the width of the pitch. This was also a defensive precaution which allowed them to only concede two goals all tournament. The wide areas were the most interesting for Spain. We often saw Iniesta start on the right and naturally he wanted to drift infield to get on the ball to create and this allowed Ramos to make his marauding runs when he overlapped. On the left hand side, Spain often faced a dilemma as Villa always looked to attack the goal alongside Torres giving them good numbers in central zones. But this left a vacuum on the left as an aging Cap de Villa was less impressive going forward to compensate for the width. So as the tournament went on, Spain had to shift to a one-man front line and allow the emerging Pedro out wide as he was much happier hugging the touchline and this stretched the opposition backline a lot more. And in this tournament, defensively, they pressed a lot more, with shades of Barcelona's system coming through. However, it was much less manic and more concerned with closing off passing lanes rather than creating turnovers high up. Euro 2012 is their last tournament win to date. It saw the emergence of the strikerless system due to an injury to Villa and Torres being badly out of form after his move to Chelsea. The mantle was taken up by a combination of Iniesta, Fabregas and Silva and Spain dominated the ball with their possession rising once again to 63%. But they faced criticism that their possession lacked bite and they averaged 58 passes per shot compared to 44 at the World Cup and 33 in 08. On the left hand side, Jordi Alba easily provided width, however on the right, Arbeloa was much more defensive, so occasionally we saw Pedro or Navas feature as the wide men. But for the most part, Spain worked their way methodically from back to front and wide overloads were a major weapon for them. They overwhelmed one side of the pitch and instead of looking for the switch as most teams would do, they used a third man runner and pinpoint passing to get through on goal, which they managed on several occasions throughout the tournament. Euro 2012 was the end of an era for Spain, with influential players like Casillas, Xavi, Iniesta, Silva and more moving on in the years to come. As of yet, they haven't regained that superiority, but what else did you like about the Spanish generation? Are they the greatest national team of all time? Comment down below. I hope you enjoyed the video and a special thanks to my Patreons for helping to make it possible. If you want to consider supporting on Patreon and have early access to videos as well as exclusive videos, check out the FMS Patreon at patreon.com slash simple. And if you're unable to support on Patreon, a like goes a long way. A big shout out to current Patreons including Yusuf, Faris Sami, Asen Akume, Ishpal Jandu, Jeffrey Hanna, William Wilkinson, Daniel Musser, Kendrick Lee, Conrad Kiziewicz, Tayab Latif, Ruben Jarecki, Accelerator and Brandon Weber. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.